You're about to watch our Cowboys seven round NFL mock draft that was originally posted on our Cowboys only channel, but because we lo love the NFL draft so much, we started our own draft focused channel. If you love the NFL draft, make sure you guys are subscribed, whether you're a Cowboys fan or not, because even if you're not a Cowboys fan, we'll have more team specific stuff. So get in the comments, rep your team. And if you want to talk some trash to the Cowboys fans that I'm sure will be here, feel free to do so right now. This is the Cowboys Report, a post-combine seven-round mock draft coming your way. If you want more mock drafts with trades in the future, show my bosses that it's something that we should do. Share this video right now. If we get 50-ish you know, shares, we'll do a mock draft with trades for our next one. Before we get to the Cowboys pick in round one, some players who were off the board. Nolan Smith, Osiris Torrance. The top four receivers, most recently Jordan Addison and Zay Flowers are gone. Bijan Robinson also taken, so cross him off your list. And yeah, I don't have to do the running back pick, which always kind of concerns me there. So round one, pick number 26, I'll go with the combine winner. How about Deontay Banks, the cornerback from line? I know I got him in round two of our last mock draft. He ain't going to be there for you. I also use the PFF, so I'm going to make it more different this time around. I think at this point a little bit more accurate looking through the rankings at this stage. Banks' production was pretty good this year. Uh, he wasn't a full-time player, which was kind of weird. They rotated him more than I thought they should have. But he fits well with Trayvon Diggs. He's not the high-risk, high-reward, ball-skill type of guy, but he does offer some good coverage and really some more lockdown stuff there. I, I would be on board with Banks in round one. It, look, I'm not finished with all my stuff yet. I won't be until much of the draft, but... I would say beyond your big three corners of Joy Porter Jr., Devin Witherspoon, uh, Christian Gonzalez, Banks is number four for me. I don't know if he's going to be there. I would not be surprised if four corners get taken. But Banks at 26, I think, is both a realistic and a quality outcome. Just got to get a little bit less grabby. Uh, eight flags this year uh, has, has to be checked out. Unlike Diggs, though, he's a damn good uh, tackler. He's very quality uh, run support player, which, again, I think fits really well with what you have in Trayvon Diggs. It's a good complementary piece at the other cornerback spot. Some others who are on the board. Uh, I really thought about going tight end here because all the tight ends fell. And if Kincaid and Michael Mayer are there, I know that you'd like your other tight ends. Why well, didn't do it? You got to consider it. The wide receiver spot was fairly limited. It was a little bit trimmed down. Josh Downs was the next best option. Drew Sanders, the linebacker, Mozzie Smith. So with the guards being gone, I kind of defaulted to the next best cornerback. Now, we have launched, folks, a new NFL Draft YouTube channel. The channel has you covered all the latest mock drafts, analysis, draft trade rumors. We'll do uh, diff different mock drafts, different needs. We need your help, though, to grow this channel by subscribing. You're not going to find a better source on YouTube for all your NFL draft needs. Simply put, more subscribers equals more videos. It's a meritocracy here at Chat Sports. So go to youtube.com slash chat NFL and subscribe. Link is at the bottom of your screen, but it's also in the comments and the description of today's video. It'll actually be at the pinned comment to make your lives a little bit easier. Go subscribe. The more Cowboys fans we get over there, the more Cowboys-focused draft videos we can do, too. YouTube.com slash chat NFL. Players taken round two. Number 57, Joe Tittman, center from Wisconsin. Darnell Wright, Josh Downs, uh, Dan Henley, my guy. Darnell Washington, who I think is going to go earlier, but oh, that, that, that would have been nice to have uh, from that standpoint. So I was very surprised Wright or Downs fell that far. Not the Cowboys MO, but it'd be interesting. So with this, what I consider the second best center gone, I'll take the best one, John Michael Schmitz out of Minnesota. Now, you're going center, we have Biotish. Yes, I do think you would be able to play John Michael Schmitz at guard. And, and the big reason why I have that mindset is what Schmitz told me at the NFL Combine about how he thinks he could play guard and how he had a conversation. He, he, the, the, the clip we're about to play here, I asked him how, how his meeting went. The part about guard, he answered unprompted, which makes me think he and the Cowboys talked about playing guard. Take a listen. 
Yeah, yeah. Cowboys uh, had a good interview with them. Um, it went really well. I mean, just anything they need uh, for me as a player, if it's a center or guard, um, I'm willing to do that. My leadership, bring that leadership, set the tone, my toughness, and uh, that grip factor I'm going to bring whatever team I'm drafted. So, yeah, yeah. So I am reading between the lines there a little bit on that front from John Michael Schmitz, but unprompted makes me think they had that conversation. Maybe he's your guard for a year, long-term center if you don't want to pay Biotish. I think talent-wise, he's going to be a top 50-ish player, so good value there. Didn't have his best year ever at Minnesota, had some up-and-down play, but he's a very intelligent player. Not the best athlete either, which I think is worth mentioning, but we're still talking above-average athleticism. And if you're going to invest on the offensive line, Cowboys have a very good track record of finding good players. Whether it be round one is their best success, but... You know, if you get four years, five years as a starting uh, day, day two, day three pick, that ends up being pretty good. Some others who were on the board, two running backs, Zach Charbonnet, Devon A-Chain. Eh, you tag Pollard, so I'll pass on a back for now. I, I wouldn't mind Tank Dell. That'd be fun. He ain't going to be there for you. Or I don't think you're going to take him there because he's just too small for the Cowboys' preferences. Jack Campbell is would be your Leighton Van Der Esch, quite literally replacement. They tested very similarly. Derek Hall, they showed interest in the combine. Edge rusher, but I don't want to take a premium edge in round two. All right, who do you guys want the Dallas Cowboys to draft? Could be any round, could be early, could be, you know, round two, round three. If you go deeper in that, I'll just be impressed for naming a later round draft pick. Name a player you want the Cowboys to take in this year's draft. All right, notable guys off the board, round three. A.T. Perry, Cedric Tillman, my guy Tyler Scott. Oh, oh, how I wish I could have gotten him. Tajay Spears, uh, Sam Laporta would have been a great pick in round three. But it's a great running back class, so let's take one here. How about Tank Bigsby out of Auburn? Did not rush for 1,000 yards. Thanks, thanks, Auburn's offense, for being a complete dumpster fire. Uh, good after-contact stuff. He's not a burner, and that showed up in his testing. It was only a 4-5-6. His 10-yard split... The burst was really good, though, out of, out of Tank's, Tank Bigsby. 179 carries, 970 yards, 5.4 average, 10 touchdowns. If you're looking to replace Zeke, which I think this team will be, Bigsby's a quality option in that day, or late day two, early day three range there. It's a great running back class, kind of why I'm fine just cutting Zeke, because I can get somebody uh, later on that could... Honestly, I, I, I would bet Bigsby averages more than four yards of carry next year. Better than what Zeke gave you. Some other guys who are on the board. Michael Wilson from Stanford was there. If you want a bigger body, outside wide receiver. Luke Schoonmaker, they met with him at the Combine too. Nick Herbig is that, well, he's, he's Zach Bond all, he's, uh, Zach Bond all over again. DeMarvian Overshone at, at linebacker. Dwayne uh, Mc, McBride at UAB, so options there uh, for the Cowboys in the later parts of the third round, but... I, I'm going big to be there pretty easily. Fourth round, I did not get a receiver yet, so we'll pretend that I signed somebody too. But I also took Bryce Ford Wheaton out of West Virginia. Heavy emphasis, by the way, on great guys who tested well at the Combine, right? The production has been eh, not the best uh, from Bryce Ford Wheaton, but the height, weight, speed profile that I know the Cowboys like is certainly there. Now, his production... You're thinking 10.9 yards carry. Okay, you're going. He's a bit more of maybe a, uh, a, a, a bigger bodied uh, possession guy. Well, he's actually super fast. He ran a 4.38 uh, unofficial there at 6'4, 221. Athletic upside is awesome. And I think a better quarterback than he had at West Virginia makes him an appealing, you know, I think he could easily go in the third round, top 100 when it's all said and done. All right, other guys who were also on the board, Dorian Williams. Luke Schoonmaker fell again, but I'm going to wait on tight ends because I, I want to prioritize receiver there. Moro Jomo, Jacorian Bennett. I, I can't go two straight Maryland corners, but he was also pretty good. Carl Brooks was the biggest combine snub at a Bowling Green, but I had to get a receiver at some point. It was, it was going on far too long not taking one at that point. So what is the biggest need? For the Cowboys. Let's say come draft time. Is it going to be receiver? Is it going to be cornerback? Is it going to be offensive line? Something else altogether? Drop that position. Can't say owner in the comment section. Round five. Zach Kuntz out of o Old Dominion. Now, this is an, a, a very appealing NFL draft prospect. Fifth round, I got him here. 
He is coming off, and we're actually going to show you his uh, his 2021 stats when he averaged 9.5 yards per catch and 692 yards, five touchdowns. The numbers this past year were not nearly uh, as good because he only played in five games. And you know what? We're trying to explain why people have an interest, so we'll be a little bit a uh, little bit nighter, or nicer uh, on that standpoint. I am intrigued by him adding a freak athlete at tight end in what is a very good draft class. Got to take one at some point because that's just, you, you, you're getting great value at that point for Dallas. We will have more Cowboys coverage for you right here on the channel. Hit that subscribe button, youtube.com slash at Cowboys TV. Free videos somewhere in the 10 to 11 per range, uh, or 10 to 11 videos per range, or per week range, excuse me. Hit that sub button right now, youtube.com slash Cowboys. Eventually, I figure out what I was trying to say. Hit that sub button right now. All right, what are your many round five picks? So we'll go quicker here since ah, it's day three. No one cares as much. Jalen Redman, uh, another athletic Oklahoma defensive tackle. Medical red flags got to be checked out here. The production was okay. Uh, tested very, very well for a player his size at the combine. I wouldn't mind trying to find more juice in the interior of that defensive line spot. Maybe Redman can be your day three athletic upside sleeper. Same exact spot, but edge rusher for DJ Johnson out of Oregon. The production was never quite what it should be for a player of his athletic gifts. But if anyone's going to maximize him, I'm going to go with Dan Quinn being the guy uh, to get that sorted out there. Decent pressure rate. Not as many sacks as you would like or you would think. Uh, he was one of the top Bruce Feldman freaks, uh, and that was proven at the combine from a testing perspective. I don't mind taking an edge on day three and see if he ends up being a nice, a nice piece long term. So will the Cowboys make any draft trades? Y for yes, N for no. They got a bunch of picks. They're in line to get a few comp picks as well. Let me know in the comments. Y for yes, N for no. Round six, I'll go with the quarterback here because I'm doing something special on round seven just for you guys. Clayton Tuna to Houston, a little bit of an older, not or possibly not that old. Fairly decent production. I think you're looking in that day three range. I mean, it could maybe be a backup quarterback for you. Really great production the past two years. Uh, a big factor being the type of offense he was playing in. Uh, and that's a massive jump from year uh, from 2020 to 2021. Huge step forward. Got better again this year. The physical traits are not the best, uh, but it is a, a for late day three. No such thing as a bad pick. Even, even going kicker late day three isn't, I did it for you guys. I did it just for you because I know we're going to get questions someday. I took a kicker for you. Jake Moody out of Michigan. If you take someone in round seven, that's fine because you're not actually committing that much. Please don't take him in the fourth round because Cade York wasn't that good this year and I thought York was actually a very good kicker. I drafted a kicker just for you guys. I will be honest. When I saw the mustache, I almost changed my mind. It, I don't think it looks very good at all, but I did go a kicker at the back end in the seventh round here. So grade this mock draft for me. A, B, C, D, or F. You can be honest. Sound off in the comments section. 